Now what I'm going to show you how to do today with this nut is how to make a spear. In a survival situation, knowing how to make tools is key. First what I did was I selected the straightest piece of wood I could find, which is very difficult in the desert. Next, I trimmed off the end a bit, and I made a split down the center to accept the nut. I just slide it right in there. Now the finger grooves give me a perfect spot to secure it with cordage. I've got about six foot of seven strand paracord here. Now what I'm going to do is just a basic wrap to secure that in place. And I'll be right back to you after I get done with that. Alright, now what I'm going to do here is explain to you what exactly we use a spear for in Arizona. Now in a lot of other regions, a spear will be a lot longer. You can throw it. You can do the same thing here. However, in Arizona we like to use it to extend our reach a little bit. Get down into those critter holes where there may be a rabbit, kangaroo rat, or even a rattlesnake. You get it in there and you jab one of them suckers and pull it out with your spear. And it's a pretty effective tool to know how to make and it's very simple. As you can tell, I use the simple tool, some cordage, and some natural material. Now after I've been playing with this for a little bit, I've found that this, this nut will actually go through quite a different bit of material. I've gotten it through a couple different branches, and I've been looking for some kind of animal that we can actually hunt with it and eat, but we haven't been able to find one yet, possibly because of the weather. If you can't see the background, there's a pretty decent sized storm rolling in, so they're usually hidden away. But I just wanted to show you what exactly you can make with this nut. Now behind me is the shelter that I slept in last night. And not only do I have this bedding here, which is Arizona Desert Room, but I slept in a cocoon sleeping bag. This is by Survivor Industries. It's basically a survival blanket taped up. But let me tell you, when you get inside, you are warm and toasty. You don't need any more insulation or anything like that. You can always put more to make yourself feel comfortable. But I used just this, and it was great. With the heat reflected from my fire to the blanket, and my body warmth in the bag, it worked wonders. Now I'm going to turn this video over to John Campbell, and he's going to show you how to start a fire with a flashlight. Okay, now this is a cheap dollar store flashlight. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull everything apart for right now. Pull all the inners out. We got to gently break the bulb. I'm going to set it right on the edge and use the butt of my K bar to just barely break that. You don't want to bust that little filament in there. It's still intact, so we're good. What that's going to leave you with is a little bowl, so to speak, to put all your tinder in to get your fire going. Using a shotgun shell to kind of carry a little bit of my tinder. When you're ready, you just turn it on. Alright, now you'll see it starting to smoke. Just gonna push it down in there. It does take a minute or two. I've never actually had this work the way you see it on TV. You actually get an ember and then you have to blow it into flame. Okay, now we've got our ember. What we're going to do is we're going to try to blow this into flame. Now the purpose of our fire today is 
Also, we can cook us up some elk steaks supplied by Jake's uncle in Colorado. All right, now we're just going to let these cook. All we did was cut some green mesquite branches and just skewered the steaks onto it, stuck them in the ground, and we're just going to let them cook over the fire this way. We went ahead and we boiled up some chicken broth here, some bouillon, just mixed it up, threw it on the fire. It's going to make a nice addition to our, our elk steaks here. I'd say mine's ready. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Look at that, nice and rare in the middle. Medium rare, actually. Oh, look at that, man, damn. Cut off a nice little piece of that. There we go. Oh. Can't beat it. Mm. Notice you have a couple new fire, uh, a couple new char tins there. Yeah, this one's actually the one I've used for a long time. In my char cloth video that I made about two years ago, this is the same one I used. And I hold on to stuff like that because it's still really usable. This one's a new one. My wife got me some cookies from the local dollar store. Cookies that honestly tasted like crap, so. I dumped them in the trash and I kept the tin for... Well worth a dollar. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. I too received some cookies as a gift this holiday season and um, I gotta say, let it snow definitely was the phrase when they were snowing into the trash can when I kept the tin. There you go. Alright, we went ahead and we've removed our char container. This one's not quite cooled off enough yet. This is Jake's small enough it's already cooled off and he's got perfect char cloth right there not a bad little char tin for some cheap cookies that I pulled out of the stocking now I wanted to come back and and show you guys the effectiveness of this tops knives knuck right here now this is just carbon plastic just peels that like nothing. Like nothing. Now if you don't want to dull your blade while you're out in the field and you need something like this to keep in your bob, I highly recommend picking them up. And you can get these off of type topsknives.com but they're an effective little survival tool easily stored in your bag or your kit. Make an arrowhead, spearhead like we just did today. You can make feather sticks with them. And I'm sure there's other multiple uses that you can get into that I haven't even found yet. All right. My char tins have cooled off. I've got some pretty good char cloth here. I actually made a pretty big batch of this. So I'm definitely going to have plenty. Little tin didn't work too badly. Oh, That's yeah. Some nice looking char cloth. Stuff turned out beautiful. Good trip. I think so. Definitely worth the uh, hour, 20 minute drive up from Avondale, I'll tell you that much. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I only live 20 minutes from here. That's where you're lucky. <laughs> Alright, fire's out. Nice and easy. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm guest appearing in this video for Jake here. My normal YouTube channel is Desert Survival. You can type that in. And I'm John Campbell from ArizonaBushman.com. And you'll be seeing me again. And I'm Jake Wilson from Wilson'sWilderness.webs.com. And you'll definitely be seeing me again.